Welcome to the Storybird tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to sign on to your Classroom Storybird account and to start creating your first story. You will need your sign-in card that your librarian gave you that has your username and your temporary password on it. To get to Storybird, you will click on the Storybird icon on your library webpage and that will take you to www.storybird.com. Because the librarian has already made an account for you, you will sign into the account by clicking on the Sign In tab on the top right of your screen. If you see someone else is logged in before you, go ahead and delete their information and then type in your username from your login card and the temporary password. We'll change that in a minute. Then click Sign In. We're going to say not now, don't save my information. You'll type in a new password that only you will know, and then you'll type it in a second time to make sure that you spelled everything right and you can get back into your account and click update password. The first time you look at your account, you won't have much on your page. Soon though, your page will be full of wonderful stories. When you click on the Your Stuff tab, any stories that you're working on or stories you have published will show up. We haven't created any stories with this account yet, so we don't have any stories in our stuff. When you click on the Class tab, you'll be able to view the assignments that your librarian or teacher has set up for you in Storybird. You'll be able to view your class library, which are all of the stories that your fellow students and teacher have made. You'll also be able to view your class list, which is where you will be able to send messages or leave comments on your fellow student stories. By clicking on the following tab at the top left of your screen, you can see any authors that you're following. Right now we're not following any. What we can do is scroll down and see if there's a story that we like. This one looks cute. If we click on the author tab at the bottom left of the cover of the story, we find that we have the choice to follow this author. So let's follow her and see. Maybe we'll like her other stories. If we see the other stories she's posted and we decide we don't want to follow her anymore, we go to the same tab and we just click unfollow. Let's go back to our stuff and let's figure out how to create a story. We could click create in the middle of this screen or we could go to the top left corner of our workspace and click Create. This takes us to a page that has a lot of artwork to choose from. If we knew we were looking for something in particular, we could choose to click on an artwork tag on the side. If we wanted pictures about Africa, we would click that. If we wanted pictures about gardens, we could click that. Or if we had a particular idea in mind that we wanted to search, we could go to the upper right hand corner of the screen and type in a search word. I'm going to type in Halloween. And then I'll click the magnifying glass symbol and that will search artwork and stories for things about Halloween. I see there are lots of stories about Halloween, but what I'm looking for is artwork. So I'll go over to the left hand menu and click on artwork. I see some interesting pictures that definitely look like Halloween pictures. Some of them look like drawings, some look like cartoons, some look like paintings. You can see there are many different kinds of artwork. I like these, so I think I'm going to choose this purple bat. I can see underneath the picture that I chose all of the different pictures that are in this collection. This looks like art that I'd like to use for my story. So I'm going to go to the top right of the picture and click use this art for a story. My workspace will pop up with a big page in the middle and lots of artwork on the side. I also have a works tray at the bottom of the screen that shows me all of the pages that I'm creating and a cover for my story. I'm going to create a cover now. I'm going to choose classic because that's the only kind of cover I can choose with my free classroom account. 
you can see that Storybird picks a picture for my cover, but I can choose a different one if I want. I just pull a picture from the side and drag it into my workspace. My author name is already right here at the bottom, and I can click in this box and type the title to my story. I'm just going to type in Halloween for now. I can go to the bottom left hand of the screen and save. And then I can return to my story by going to the bottom right hand side of the screen and clicking on these blank pictures. Now I can add different pictures and I can place them in different spots on the screen. I'll put this one here. I can add text to my pages by clicking on the open space and just typing. Now if I want to save my project, I go down to the bottom left hand and click Save, or I can go to the really left hand bottom and click on Menu. I can save and close so that I can come back and work on my story later. I could invite a collaborator, which means I could work with a classmate online, or I could click Publish which will take me to a screen with lots of choices about publishing my story. I could change the title if I wanted to. I could add a summary, what the story is about. I could choose a category that my story will fit in. I could add user tags, like we saw when we were searching artwork. And I could indicate who my story is written for. I think this one will end up being for kids. I'll come back and choose the rest of those after I've finished my story. This story is not for an assignment, so I'm just going to leave all these little lines in the assignment spot. And my classwork is always private, whether it's for an assignment or something I'm just making for fun. I'm going to click on Publish. And then we'll be able to see my story. There you have it. If you have any trouble signing on or getting your story started, don't be shy about asking for help. I can't wait to see your first story.